Hi, it's Jordan from thisweekinlinux.com, and today we are going to talk about Adobe Flash 10.3 Beta. As I mentioned a few days ago in the news video, Adobe officially released 10.3 Beta of their Flash Player. However, it's only for 32-bit systems at this point, so if you do want to try it out, make sure you're using a 32-bit system, otherwise it won't work. I learned that lesson the hard way. Now, if you're interested in trying out this beta, you should probably know a few things about it first. It does come with what's called media measurement, which allows you to keep track of the analytics for your content. It allows you to see more up-to-date, if not real-time, analytics for what's going on with your content, to see who's viewing it, where they're coming from, all sorts of things like that. Not terribly useful for most end users, but if you're a content creator, if you're a person that's putting Flash materials out there directly, this is great for you. It also comes bundled with a native control panel that you can install and manage all of your security settings for Flash. It actually integrates into the browser, Firefox browser, if I remember correctly, and there's one for GNOME or KDE, so you can manage all of your camera settings, your microphone settings, storage settings for Flash on whatever website you want to. Very, very cool after taking a look at it. But let's go ahead and get started with the installation tutorial. If you've already got Flash Player installed and you want to try out 10.3 Beta, you need to go ahead and uninstall it. However you installed it in the first place, just do that in the opposite order. Generally speaking, you should just be deleting your libflashplayer.so file from wherever it is. So the first thing you're going to have to do to get this 10.3 Beta is go to labs.adobe.com and download it. The easiest way I've found to get there quickly is to go to google.com, type in Flash 10.3, and the first search result should be the labs.adobe.com com site straight to the Flash 10.3 beta. Once you're on that site, you can take a look at some of the features of Flash 10.3 we did not discuss yet. You can also scroll on down to where it says download for Linux, and you can click on the tar.gz file to download that to your hard drive. And this is the point in the video where you get to make a little bit of a choice. If you want to do this through the terminal, go ahead and click on the annotation I'll put over here. If you want to do this the graphical way, go ahead and click on the annotation over here. If you choose the terminal path, you'll see that first, and then you can see the graphical part after. I'm going to try to make this as interactive and as easy as possible, so click what you want below and enjoy. Okay, so you've chosen the terminal method. Now that we've got the file downloaded, what we're going to have to do is go ahead and open up your terminal. I'm going to assume GNOME terminal because a lot of people are on GNOME, but you should be able to do this the same way through KDE, through XFCE, whatever else you want to use. Open up your terminal. In GNOME, I would do Applications, Accessories, Terminal. Browse to the directory where you downloaded your file. Since I saved it to my downloads directory, I'm going to change over to the downloads directory. Untar the file with tar xzvf and the file name. If you're unfamiliar with the tar command, the x says extract the file, the z says it is a gzipped file, the v says do it verbosely so you can actually see what's being extracted, and the f says this is the file and put the file name right after it to continue. After just a second or two, you should have all of the files extracted and be ready to go. If you type ls at that point, it should show you a user directory and a libflashplayer.so file, along with the .tar.gz file that you had downloaded. So where do we put this libflashplayer.so file? The easiest place to put it, especially since it's beta, is in your home directory's Mozilla directory in the plugins directory inside of that. Now in my case, I don't actually have a plugins directory yet, so what I'm going to do is type in makedir, m-k-d-i-r, tilde slash dot mozilla slash plugins and that'll go into my home directory to my dot mozilla folder and create a plugins directory from there we're going to go ahead and copy the file in so type cp libflashplayer.so and then tilde slash dot mozilla slash plugins and hit enter after just a second most likely less the libflashplayer.so file should copy into your new plugins directory. And if you go ahead and open up Firefox at this point, go to YouTube and go to specifically the This Week in Linux page because you know you want to support me. Go ahead and look there, you should see Flash Player working. If you right click on it, you should see 10.3.180. something. I'm not exactly sure of the version number at this point. If you don't see that, it didn't work correctly. Either you didn't uninstall Flash beforehand or you're not running on a 32 bit system. Otherwise, if it did work correctly, let's go ahead and continue. If you're interested in using this native control panel for KDE or GNOME, we can go ahead and copy the user directory there to the root folder into the user directory. To do that from the terminal is very simple. What we're going to go ahead and type in is sudo cp capital R usr, since we were in the directory already and we were able to see the user directory, and then forward slash. So we've got sudo cp capital R usr forward slash, and all the spaces appropriately you should be able to see from the on-screen display. 
After you hit enter and give it your password just a couple of seconds later, all of those files should be copied over. If you go ahead and hit system preferences, you should see your second or third option, depending on what you've got installed, should be Adobe Flash. And if you click on that option, you will have that native control panel come up and you'll be able to manage all of the security settings related to Flash. But that's all as far as installing it through the terminal. If you wanna go ahead and continue to the end, I'll have an annotation here. Otherwise, here in just a second, I'll go ahead and start the graphical installation part. Okay, so you want to install this graphically, and I can't say that I blame you. Basically, what you're gonna do at this point is go into your downloads directory, wherever it is you saved that tar.gz file. In my case, I saved it to my downloads directory, so I'm going to click Home and then Downloads. Once that opens up, you should see your tar.gz file, flash player, blah, 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 dot tar.gz. Go ahead and right click on that and say extract here. It should create a new folder for you. I'm assuming this is in GNOME with Nautilus. If you're doing it within KDE, it'll probably be just a little bit different. Some other desktop environments will of course be a little bit different, but getting it into Firefox should be the same pretty much on all of them. Now that we've extracted those files, go ahead and go into the Flash plugin directory that was created. Look for libflashplayer.so, right click on it and go to copy. Once you've copied the file, click on the home folder again and go to your home directory. Inside that home directory, hit Control H if you're in Nautilus to show the hidden files. If you're in any other file browser, hit whatever combination you have to hit to show hidden files. Go into your .mozilla directory and create a plugins directory. Inside the plugins directory, go ahead and right click and paste in that libflashplayer.so file. At this point, if you'd like to test the Flash Player, you can run Firefox, go to youtube.com, and if you'd like, go to youtube.com slash thisweekinlinux if you want to support me. Check out there and make sure your Flash Player is working appropriately with the appropriate version by right clicking on the Flash module that loads. See it down at the bottom if it says 10.3.180. something. Again, not sure of the version number at this point. If it doesn't say that, you've either forgotten to uninstall your Flash Player beforehand or it didn't install appropriately. Feel free to go back and watch this again. Make sure you followed all these steps appropriately. But for now, if you're interested, we're gonna go ahead and install that native graphical control panel for Flash. So go back into your Flash plugin directory that we extracted earlier. See the user directory that's there, right click on it and go down to copy. At this point, go ahead and hit Alt F2. That should bring up a run dialog box in most desktop environments. In GNOME specifically, I know that it does. In that box, if you're in GNOME, you're gonna type in GKSUDO Nautilus. And that's going to run Nautilus with administrative privileges. This is not highly recommended. It's not something you're gonna to wanna to do terribly often, but it does work for what we need it to. Once Nautilus runs, you'll probably see that you're in the root directory, in the root subfolder of the root directory, actually. Go ahead and hit the button at the top to move back to the root. Right click anywhere in the root directory and say paste, and it will ask you if you want to merge some files in. After you've merged all those files, you can actually apply all and just merge everything in at once. It will set up that native control panel for you. You can double check this by going to System, Preferences, and looking for Adobe Flash. It should be the second one there. But from there, you can manage all of your security settings, you can manage your camera and microphones with regard to Flash. And basically, that's about it. If you're interested in removing this 10.3 beta, if something goes wrong with it, go back into your plugins directory and delete it. If you want to remove the native control panel, that's gonna be a little bit trickier. You have to actually go through and delete all of the files by hand. They're probably not gonna hurt anything being there otherwise, but yeah, we'll just have to go through and figure out what they are and then delete them all by hand. So make sure that you don't put that control panel out there unless you're 100% sure that you want to do this. But that's all for today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you really like this video, hit the little plus symbol down below and say add to favorites. If you wanna be notified when I put out a new video, go ahead and click the subscribe button overhead. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.